Italians are one of the oldest non-Irish national communities in modern Ireland. They arrived in large numbers during the post-war years of the last century, mainly from the Frosinone region. They created a market for a product that now seems as Irish as St. Patrick's Day. Fish and Chips Ariana Prandi is one of a new Italian wave that arrived during the Celtic Tiger. After a dip, during the financial crisis, it still continues today. Italians are one of Ireland's growing communities, though modern arrivals are more likely to work in IT or fancy Italian restaurants than fish and chip shops. Ariana recalls what it was like being an Italian arriving in Ireland during the heady days of the Celtic Tiger economic boom. If you were Italian, you could go to any pizza place and say, hey, I'm Italian, so you can make pizza. Uh, not really. Yes, you can make pizza. Okay. So um, it was really much easier than, than today. Things change. Um, we went through um, some hard times back in uh, the economic crunch in 2008. But I think Ireland called me back because uh, I got um, a job offer uh, with a relocation package back then. So yeah, Ireland wanted me back, for sure. Ariana is a self-confessed foodie, whose grandma had a restaurant back in Italy, and whose mother cooked everything from scratch. Living in Dublin for over a decade, gives Ariana an insight into the relationship between Irish people, and the food they eat. People prefer to go to a cheaper, rather than cooking at home. Um, people still prefer to have takeaways. So there is not much culture, food culture in that way. Um, in relation to ingredients, Irish go where it's more advertised. So they prefer to go to maybe a supermarket rather than a local market. Um, this is my experience, then I probably met the wrong people, I don't know. <laughs> If she's met the wrong people, then some of the right people Ariana has met, are her fellow band members. The Skatuesques are a popular all-female ska band, for which she plays bass guitar. On tour, Ariana's food passion quickly revealed itself, as singer D recalls. be going to the supermarket and Ariana would be like you know getting her little bits and her pastas and her sauces and we get back to the to the mobile I'd be like right okay what are we going to do for dinner and Ariana would be like I have this I'm in the kitchen leave me I'm fine and she made the best the best pasta like spaghetti dish and I was eating it for two days solid. Ariana never lets anything go to waste so she'd always pop the little bits in her in her little foodie box her, her really foodie box and bring it with her and the next day she'd make this amazing spread with these leftovers you know she's she's an artist not just with the base but when it comes to food it's an art and she treats it like an art and she's a phenomenal cook and a phenomenal friend and a phenomenal musician and um, yeah that girl can cook it's little surprise then that when she read about the romancing island challenge to cook an Italian favourite dish, as voted on by her compatriots in their Facebook group for Italians in Ireland. Ariana was first to volunteer. This challenge is cook your national dish with only ingredients that you can um, grow and get uh, from, from Ireland. In this envelope, it was voted um, the dish to cook and let's see which dish it was chosen for my country which is Italy okay 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 I think it represents well the country so my challenge is to cook parmigiana di melanzane only using Irish ingredients as might be expected from a dish voted by Italians to best represent their country, a Google search brings up a wealth of images for Parmigiana di Melanzane. Ariana is not surprised by the choice. Um, Parmigiana di Melanzane is totally something uh, that can unify North, South, Islands of, 
uh, of Italy. Ingredients that you can you can really get well uh, in Italy um, because there is a bit of little bit of cheese. There is a little bit of uh, vegetables, and these are typical uh, vegetables that grow in Italy. So the challenge now is. Will the same vegetables be grown in Ireland? Uh, do we have the same type of cheese? Um, there is also olive oil uh, included in, in the recipe. Uh, there are different ways to, to cook it uh, as well. Let me think by heart uh, what I use when I, uh, when I cook uh, Parmigiana di Milanzane. Um, so, of course, it's melanzane, it's the main ingredient, so, which are aubergines. Um, this is a good, good uh, challenge because I don't know if anyone grows aubergines here in Ireland. And as well, um, there is um, passata di pomodoro, which is um, a tomato pu puree. And I don't know if there are tomatoes. I don't know if there is uh, any factory doing uh, the passata or if I have to do it from scratch. We can we can check. Um, other than that, uh, there is um, mozzarella, and that's a challenge as well. Where can I get mozzarella here in Ireland? I don't know. No clue. And parmigiano. Oh, that is really tough. That is really tough. Um, I don't know if there is anything similar to Parmigiano or Grana Padano or this kind of mm, cheese. When a dish has so few ingredients, each one has to be just right. And the cheese is absolutely crucial. So finding an alternative for the Italian Parmigiano Reggiano is the first task that Ariana takes on as she sets about her romancing island challenge. Our cheese story goes back to about the 1970s when a lot of Europeans moved here for the good life. They started farming and they came with their own recipes from their own countries and started making cheeses to their type, if for want of a better word. Ariana has been on the phone about her romancing Ireland challenge. She is cooking a dish with aubergines and she's looking for a replacement for Reggiano. Um, I've had a little think about this and I came up originally with smoked um, Nocanor cheddar um, and then I also went for the caution of tear. Um, Ariana is going to taste both of them and she's going to make the selection herself. So when we spoke on the phone I mentioned um, Pecorino Romano um, this is cautionary tear made in Tipperary. It would be similar. It's a sheep's cheese, pasteurized, vegetarian rennet. It's aged about six to nine months, and um, Barry and Lorraine make it um, in their farm. Would you like to taste? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. As you can see by the outside of it, there's a nice bit of age in it. Almost sweet, isn't it? Yeah, and it's not so strong. Mm, it's lovely, and the consistency. Mm. It's the right one. So you'll be grating that over the aubergines that yeah. you pan fried already? Yeah. Oh, lovely. And that's layered in the, in the dish, or it's just at yeah. the top? It's, um, well, it should be on the top, but I, I prefer I, it to layer it a little generous, bit. <laughs> very generous. The other cheese I mentioned was the smoked um, cheddar would be similar um, to maybe the smoked, smoked scamosa mm -hmm. yeah. um, in that if you were using a smoked cheese and if you needed an Irish smoked cheese the beauty of this is it's uh, vegetarian it's uh, farmhouse made and it's Lovely. authentically smoked so Eamon Lonergan smokes it in his own in his own farm it's not flavoured smoked and also we have cheddar here yes we I do see. Yeah, because at the beginning I was thinking maybe cheddar could be 
the right cheese, but this is, is much yeah. um, closer. That melted over your aubergines. Mm. So, um, I have some cheese downstairs, let me collect it. Yeah, okay. that's great. Thank you. Her Parmigiano alternative secured, Ariana turns her attention to the other ingredient which gives its name to the dish, the melanzane. Some research at home reveals that most aubergines in Ireland are imported. However, while it's not easy to grow them here, it's not impossible. And in a community garden a stone's throw from the Aviva Stadium, Joe McCann has been doing just that. We can grow sort of most things now. Uh, I suppose that the fact that the climate is changing and it's a lot hotter. Uh, we're growing a lot of stuff that you probably wouldn't have been able to, to grow outdoors and it could only grow indoors. So the lice of the tomatoes here, we get a, a monster crop growing outside and they actually ripened quicker this year than the ones in here. And that was a strange one as well, although we experimented with different types of tomatoes. And some of the foreign ones, uh, the seeds we got, grew better. So there could be a link in between uh, where something is from, and if you create the right conditions, you could get the same taste. The aubergines never seem to sort of get to the size uh, that you get in a supermarket, where we're totally organic here. But I think it might suffer in terms of maybe the size, but the quality is actually better. Joe's aubergines are from seeds that he brought home from a trip to Italy. Ariana arrives to see if the plants that grew from them have produced melanzane that she can use in her dish. Uh, we're growing a couple of white varieties and also a purple and white variety. So, uh, Fantastic. you're more than welcome to have a look. Uh, oh, I've cooked at them and some of them are a little bit bitter than others, but they only absorb flavour anyway. So, and I've looked at some Italian uh, recipes uh, for aubergines and a bit like the Greek, they use them in the masak or wherever it is. But most of the dishes are based around uh, a region in, in Italy. So could we produce the same stuff here from our ingredients here? You're not going to get Parmesan cheese. You can get buffalo mozzarella. So you would have to do something. And most of the uh, recipes I've seen, they, they involve sort of uh, getting the... Getting the uh, aubergines and slicing them and frying them and whatever and learning them like a lasagna or whatever it is with the buffalo mozzarella or whatever in there but there was an awful lot of parma, parmesan cheese in there but we don't do it so could we do an, an Irish or Italian one you know could you leave out uh, the ingredient you can't get but uh, we could certainly have a go at it anyway uh, you know we could always stick them on a pizza or whatever we just blend them and make a dip out of them like we we had a lot of that when we travelled to uh, Cyprus, we got sort of hooked on it. Uh, and things we noticed as well when we made the relishes, a lot of them, uh, particularly the dark, the dark aubergines, uh, aesthetically don't look great. They're not that appetising looking and there's not a great flavour off them. In fact, it can be a bit bitter and you usually put some salt to draw out the moisture or whatever it is but they really just absorb flavour. So, you know, if you pair them together with the, with the, uh, the tomatoes that we can grow, and we've a lot of Italian varieties of, of tomato this year, so we could certainly put something together and we, you know, the hair boys, we can have basil or whatever. So, you know, leaving the Parmesan cheese out of it, we could probably knock up something uh, Anglo-Italian, Anglo you know. Uh, but uh, most of the ingredients are sort of here. Uh, we have peppers and whatever, so, yeah. Okay, Ariana, if you, yeah. uh, when you go inside here, uh, yeah. the aubergines are just on your left. Uh, I'll hang out here. You'll see the white one and the black one. And uh, so Lovely. everything you want is there. Look at this. Look at this. So nice. You're more than welcome to harvest what we have here and take as many tomatoes away as you like as well. We have a few varieties anyway. And after that, the best look.
And back home, we're searching for the rest of her ingredients, it seems that luck might just be on Oriana's side. Okay, so it looks I found what we need. Um, in uh, Macro near Cork, there is a farm uh, that has buffaloes. And guess what? They have buffaloes straight from Italy. They imported buffaloes from Italy in 2009. So um, I think we can check if uh, the mozzarella tastes like Italian mozzarella. In 2009, when the price of cow's milk was very low at about 20 cent a litre, uh, my father took the chance of importing a herd of water buffalo to make uh, buffalo mozzarella, uh, which had a higher value at the time than anything from cow's milk, basically. Uh, since then, the herd has grown year on year, and we've been able to produce mozzarella on the farm ourselves. Um, it's been a major success so far, and we're supplying many retailers now across the country. Today for the Romancing Ireland Challenge, uh, an Italian volunteer is coming to the farm to try out some uh, of our buffalo mozzarella uh, in her Italian national dish. In our first year of um, making cheese, we sent uh, a couple of samples to the World Cheese Awards and at won gold in its first year. So um, any kind of issues the Italians had, they had to kind of keep it quiet because we were after beating them at their own game at that stage. So but I think the mozzarella we make here on Macroom Buffalo Farm is much better than the Italian stuff. So. We'll get to see now which, which uh, mozzarella is better. With some phone guidance from Kieran, Ariana arrives at the remote cork farm. She's come a long way, but there is a lot at stake. If the McCroom mozzarella doesn't work out, she's in trouble. So I tell you what I'm trying to do today. Um, I am trying to prepare my national dish, uh, Italian national dish, which is melanzana alla parmigiana. So the recipe is Melanzane, which are aubergines with tomato sauce, mozzarella and parmesan cheese, parmigiano. And mozzarella is such an important ingredient for uh, this dish. So um, would you help me out with that? Yeah, we make some brilliant fresh buffalo mozzarella here. So I think that will go great with your food. How does it taste like? Is it Italian mozzarella? Um, I think it tastes better than the Italian mozzarella, but I'll let you figure that out for yourself. If you want to wait over there at the barrels, I'll get you some. So, it's the moment of truth. Kieran gets to test his mozzarella on a real Italian, and Ariana gets to find out if a key ingredient for her parmigiana is in the bag. This looks beautiful. Mm, I'm gonna try one. Mmm. So soft and creamy. Yeah. Mmm. I mean, the taste is really good. It is really fresh. You think it's as good as the Italian? Maybe it's even better than <laughs> the Italian one. So, is there any chance I can see this buffalo? Uh, yeah, we can go to the field to have a look at them now if you'd like. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Super. let's do that. To Ariana's delight, among the herd are some of the original buffalo that Kieran's dad brought from Italy in 2009. Oh my god, and they are so nice and quiet. Yeah, she looks happy to, to meet another Italian. <laughs> so I, I have to say buongiorno. Eccoci qua. Bello. Obelix. His name is Obelix. Obelix and the rest of the herd are left to their grazing now as Ariana returns to Dublin, where she has one more challenge to overcome. How will she replace one of Italian cuisine's most basic ingredients? Olive oil. Okay then, um, I was thinking, where can I fry my aubergines? Um, in which oil uh, will it be possible to fry them? And I found um, the Rogers family in Newgrange. They own this uh, business uh, and uh, they make rapeseed oil. So we can give it a go, we can try if this oil is, is good for frying aubergines because I only heard that you use rapeseed oil for engines, so no clue if I can do that with that. Newgrange Gold, rapeseed oil, gets its name from the world famous monument, a stone's throw from the company's county mead base in the historic Boyne Valley. Owner Jack Rogers is happy to show Ariana his award-winning product. 
Hi, Andy. Hi, Jack. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to the Boyne Valley. Thank you. I have a few bottles over here. So we'll both have a chat about it. Okay. Thank you. We're very lucky to be able to cold press and bottle all our oils here on our farm. And we get them from um, we get them from local farmers. Um, so you, you said you're cooking a dish. Yeah. So I'm trying to cook uh, melanzana la parmigiana. And it's very, very important that we fry the um, aubergine. It's basically aubergine deep fried with um, some uh, tomato sauce and mozzarella and parmigiano. So I need to adapt to the local product for this challenge. And I was wondering if you could explain me a little bit more about uh, this rapeseed oil and how I can use it. Yeah, no problem. Rapeseed oil, ours anyway, is uh, first pressed or cold pressed, like extra virgin uh, olive oil. Um, it's got lots of vitamin E and lots of uh, omega-3. Uh, the vitamin E gives it a long shelf life and also makes it really stable for cooking. So it has a, a high smoke point of about 200 to 240 degrees centigrade. So it's really good for, for frying or baking or even using on salads or dressings. But it's going to be a good alternative for your olive oil. And uh, it sounds like your dish is going to be lovely. I've also given you one of our flavoured oils, so you can give that a go if you wish. It's our chilli garlic. Okay, so I can spice it up a, a little bit with this. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you very much, they look great. No Thanks. Problem. No problem, best of luck with the dish. The Boyne Valley has become a really, uh, really special in terms of the artisan production that's happening in the region. Uh, like here in Slane, I'm involved with the, the Slane Food Circle with um, five other producers. But there's really interesting stuff going on in, in the, the Boyne Valley and uh, New Grange Gold is, is just another part of that. And a lot of chefs locally are starting to really take on brands and, and products that are produced here in the valley. Particularly since Covid, a lot of people have started to ask for Irish. They're beginning to ask more about where their product that they buy on the shelf comes from. They're beginning to ask more about what it's packaged in, wanting to know about how things grow, you know, how you can see it with the grow your own and People are becoming more inquisitive, really, about food in general. So it's great to see. What's also great to see is that, having secured Jack's rapeseed oil, Ariana is now almost ready to cook her parmigiana di melanzane. One final hurdle stands in her way. While it's not hard to find good Irish-grown tomatoes, none of the tomato passatas that she can find are made from them. It seems that Ariana will have to make her own passata using the tried and trusted methods of an older Italian generation. Now it's time for passata for tomato puree. So I have this tool uh, which I bought recently, but my mom used to have it at home. You just need to put your vegetables inside and, and then passare and then <laughs> You just pass with these and you basically crush them. I'm gonna get my tomatoes which are boiled and so they cracked and they are very very soft now and yeah so it needs a good two hours to, to evaporate and to have a good consistency. With the passata reducing on the stove, Ariana turns her attention to the aubergines, or melanzane. First of all, she cuts them into thick slices. Then, using Oriel Irish sea salt, she covers the slices to absorb the excess moisture. While she is waiting for this to happen, she prepares the cheese. First the kushnatira, and then the mozzarella. I have to cut the mozzarella, and it's very, very creamy. You need to be careful. Cut them, cut it into dices. This is this is my favorite part of the mozzarella. I'm sorry, I have to do it. Mm, beautiful. It's the creamiest part. Next, Ariana dries the aubergine slices and fries them in the New Grange Gold oil. Now, while the aubergines are frying, I have to start with a little layer of my passata. Ariana assembles all of the ingredients in layers, beginning with the tomato passata. She alternates the aubergine and buffalo mozzarella. The parmigiana is topped off with more tomato and the kushnatira cheese, 
before going into the oven. When baked, all Ariana can do is garnish the parmigiana with some fresh basil. But, now it's down to her friend Maria Antonetta to judge whether or not Ariana has succeeded in her Romancing Island challenge. Salt is really, really powerful. It's very salty, isn't it? Mm, no. No? No? I love it, Ariana. You can tell the ingredients are really good. So everything is made locally, produced and made locally, yes? Yeah. Aubergines, tomatoes and... Uh, Basil and... yeah. And no, it's cheese. Really, it's really nice, Ariana. Mm. Home food. Pretty good, yeah. It yeah, is. I'm satisfied. Her homemade passata is really nice. And uh, these spaces like parmigiana made in Italy, in fairness, like the mozzarella is amazing and um, the basil tastes like basil. I cannot, I cannot fold the dish at all. It's, it's perfect. Not for a second I doubt that your skills, but I was thinking mm, parmigiano, which is a very distinctive flavor. How are they going to replace our parmigiano? And the cheese she's used is perfect. It's very, very close to parmigiano. I, I love the cheese. So, to me, this is a 10 out of 10. So, it's full marks for Ariana. She cooked Italy's favorite dish, as voted on by Italians in Ireland. And she has used only Irish products. But, what has the journey been like for her? It was a wonderful experience for me. I really enjoyed every single moment of, uh, of this. Um, tonight, the meal, wow. Uh, I think it was um, a bit, bit hard for me to make the passata from scratch because it takes literally hours and hours and hours and hours to boil. But yeah, I did my best and um, taste-wise, it was very tasty. And this is because the um, ingredients were so close to the ingredients I use uh, normally in Italy uh, to cook melanzana alla parmigiana. The ingredient that um, was a really a real discovery for me was the cashnatir, which is a very hard cheese um, and it was really, really close to Parmigiano or Grana Padano, maybe closer to Grana Padano uh, taste-wise. I was really into this project. There are two elements that I really liked. One is saying the world, telling the world that it's possible to cook anything you want with what you have in your own country. Um, so you could actually um, cut all the cost of importing uh, fuel and anything. So it was super good to have this experience. And second of all, because I like cooking and I never tried these ingredients. If I think of, okay, I have to cook melanzana alla parmigiana, Mm, I immediately start looking for Italian ingredients and this is something I discovered with this program that I can also use local ingredients. DeclanCassidy.com Carrots were never meant to be uniformly shaped, no matter tomatoes or bananas or anything. So there's, there's a, a revolution of food going on out there. But you can, uh, if you want to take the time to prepare food, that's probably the key to it. Because the fast option is not always the best option.